So, um, for those of you who don't know, the U.S. men's national team, the soccer team, uh, is, di- didn't qualify for the World Cup. Not going to be in the World Cup. Uh, they lost to Trinidad. And uh, they're not going to be in the World Cup. I don't know if anyone notices this, but uh, they're not. And Nick is our soccer guy um, on the podcast, so I brought him on because I kind of wanted to talk about it. Uh, I'm a loose soccer fan, uh, but I know when the World Cup comes around, I'm like fucking super excited. Uh, Get very American during the World Cup, Mm. uh, but now I'm not going to be able to. So I just kind of want to know what the fuck happened because this is the first time they haven't qualified for the World Cup since 1986. I'm not even trying to play to the camera right now. I've I've looked like this since that result. I have looked, <laughs> and he you look bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I I I I don't know. I don't know how to feel. I feel angry. I feel pissed off. I feel upset. I feel depressed. I feel as if the last 30 plus years of momentum, the slow momentum and the slow build that U.S. soccer has had in this country has been halted. And similar to how a college football program like SMU got like the death penalty right. and then they haven't been over been able to overcome it still, I've, I wouldn't go to that extent, extent, but it's devastating, man. This is something where, you know, our generation of soccer fans in, in this country and even the younger generation, this is a given to us. This is like, we're going to be there. You right. know what I mean? And the CONCACAF qualifying, you're playing teams the likes of Trinidad and Tobago, Panama, Honduras, and no disrespect to them. I'm sure they're great people, but you should be advancing on these teams if you want to be considered a legit national team. And... The talks after the last World Cup was, could we beat Colombia? Could we beat uh, Brazil? Could we beat uh, Italy? We can't beat Trinidad. We can't beat Costa Rica at home. We got shellacked at home. And it's just it, it's just overwhelming. I, I, I can't put it towards. It's, it's crazy. I, I never really... I thought it was like the easiest thing in the world to qualify for. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know why. Like, I mean, I, I obviously don't really know the specifics of it and everything. But I was just like, yeah, I mean, there's random countries that I've never heard of that won't make it to the World Cup. But, like, we'll be there. Like, it's, you know. And especially in CONCACAF, where the top three seeds are automatic bids. Mind you, six teams are in this. Six teams they're working. It's called the Hexagon. And there's six teams. They came in fifth. (laughs) So Honduras has to play a playing game. And, you know, Costa Rica and Mexico advance. Like, your, your main competition throughout all these years is Mexico. Mexico and USA is a big rivalry, but it's a it's a layup, as you would like to say when you're giving your football picks. This yeah. is a layup for them to be in the World Cup, and they're not going to be. So, like, what's the what's the root of the problem? I mean, I know they just got that new coach, Bruce Arenas, right? Yeah. So Br- Bruce Arena was never a permanent fix. He was a guy that was just going to step in, get them to the World Cup after Jurgen Klinsmann got canned, and then after the World Cup. He was going to be replaced also because that's that's just how it is. In international soccer, you have a very small window of opportunity as a coach. Um, coaches come in and out, and you often see it where they go through one World Cup cycle. Granted, there are exceptions to the rule. You had Del Bosque, the manager of Spain a couple of years ago. They won a Euro World Cup Euro. You're not going to can the guy after winning a major t- t- right. title. Uh Most notably now is uh, Jurgi Love, who's the manager for Germany. He was actually the heir apparent to Jurgen Klinsmann. So it's very rare where you see a coach stay on for two World Cups. So Bruce Arena was just a quick fix for for the time being. And people kind of felt like Jurgen Klinsmann's message kind of got... He overstayed his welcome, as they say. Right. But, you know, to give him some credit, he had a plan. He laid out a foundation like, yo... For you to be a national power, you look at all these teams, Joe, they have great domestic leagues. You look at La Liga in Spain, great league. The English Premier League, we're, we're all aware of. I mean, every bar in New York City in the mornings on Saturdays, 730s, are packed out for the English Premier League. They're right. on all the networks now. Uh, league One in France, Syria in Italy. You look ar- around and the national team, their basis stems from a strong domestic league. And the MLS is, look, it's a 25 to 30-year-old league. It's still a new league, but it's nowhere near on the same level of 
playing playing field as those other countries. So like, but I, like I said, what, what, what's like the problem? Is it is it Bruce Arena or is it the players? The players aren't as good. We just don't have the talent to move forward into and, and qualify for the World Cup. Is it the talent? It's top to bottom from the president, uh, who Galati, who's getting a lot of heat, all the way down to the last guy on the bench. I'd be down to clean house, everybody. I'd keep three, four guys I'd keep. Obviously, my boy, Pulisic, yeah. who, by the way, guys, just turned 19 years old. He accounted for 12 of the 17 goals that USA scored in CONCACAF. Jeez. So for those of you out there that might be saying, oh, he's overrated or this Wonder Boy stuff, just imagine if he wasn't playing for us, how bad it would be. All right. All right. 12 of the 17 goals. All right, he plays in Borussia Dortmund. It's a top 15 club in Europe. They're playing in Champions League. They're currently number one. They're the first place team in the Bundesliga, and he's playing significant minutes. All right, remind, remind, remind you once again, he's 19 years old. Uh, Bobby Wood also plays in Bundesliga. I'm a fan of his. Kelly Acosta, he plays in for FC Dallas in the MLS. He's 22 years old. He's young. He's still a little raw, but he brings a different element to the team with the set pieces, free kicks, penalties, and corners. And then uh, DeAndre Yudlin, he plays on Newcastle in the Premier League. Everybody else, I'm down to cut ties with. Tim Howard, who's your boy, we were, you know, our our most memorable. (laughs) Well, he was nice. Yeah, against Belgium. That's a lot of people say it's the most dominant World Cup game performance ever. And mind you, they lost that game and he gave up two goals. But he had 16 saves where 10 of them were world class saves. But this is that was 2014. Yeah. This guy also, if you guys don't remember, he took a, a sabbatical where he just left the national team for like a year and three months. Yep. That should have been done with there. They have no backup plan at, at goalie. Brad Guzan is the backup. And the last two teams he's been, he's been on in the Premier League have gotten relegated. And you know how in re- relegation you get sent down right. in the league. So, like, what does that say about you? Yeah. And then you got a lot of guys like Michael Bradley overstayed his welcome. He's just been the same like he peaked at like he was on an uphill and then at like 25 years old he kind of just stayed there was no more growth just Josie out to do out the door that's as best as it gets I get Clint Dempsey I feel for him too you know he's, he's gonna be 35 years old this was his last chance at a world cup and just top to bottom and also a thing that's like kind of underrated and underlooked is the youth system in this country so in other countries, I remember I was telling you about this, how in the Argentinas, the Brazil, those, those poor countries out there, soccer is the poor man's sport. It's a sport that these kids use as a way out. Mm-hmm. You know, you see some of these crazy videos on YouTube or on, you know, all over the internet where these kids are playing soccer with a plastic bag. They just, you know, the parents go to the grocery store and they just get a, a bunch of plastic bags and they make it a bowl or they make a bowl out of socks. In the U.S., it's considered similar to lacrosse. It's the rich person's game. Right. Because for you to make your kid play travel soccer, you're looking at like $3,500, $4,000 a kid. Now, if you have a kid, you have a family of four kids and they all want to play travel soccer, bedtime. <laughs> you're looking at like $15,000 to send to your kid. And Christian Pulisic, when he was 16 years old, his dad was like, you know what? You're not, you have, we have something here with you. You're not going to stay in the, the U.S. Academy. We're going to take you overseas. And that's usually what happens with the good American players. They tend to go overseas. We have good talent. It's just that developing, developing them here is the issue. Mm. Okay. I mean, so, but I mean, let's say we do clean house. Like, where do, where do we start that? And where, where are we looking for new players? Who, like, I don't understand. You would have to, you, you'd have to start with the guys that are currently playing overseas and they're playing big minutes. Example, Pulisic, Bobby Wood, Yedlin. I left off Jeff Cameron, who, by the way, wasn't playing in that game against Trinidad. He's playing over at Stoke City. He hasn't been subbed off yet for the in the English Premier League, and they've had some tough games. You know, they've played Arsenal. They've played uh, uh, Chelsea. they played some big teams, and he's a big piece of the center back. And, you know, Omar Gonzalez scores an own goal. Granted, I'm sure he didn't mean to do that on purpose, but you know, this is a guy that should have been in the starting eleven. So I would look to the teams in Europe, maybe guys in South America if there are anywhere, and start with there. If you're playing in the MLS, as much as I want the MLS to grow, a lot of people treat the MLS like these old legends like Andrea Pirlo, David Villa, who come over here. 
It's uh it's a retirement plan. It's yeah. a you know a, a last big check. Kaká who plays over in Orlando now, like these guys could play in Europe for like a half. They'd be solid, but now they just come and chill. And they're the biggest star. They're, they're the highest paid players on their team, but. It's not really helping the MLS when right. people treat it as a retirement home. So it's just not looking good here. So the ne- the next World Cup game that we'll see from the U.S. hopefully is in basically five years. Yeah, four and a half years. It, it, it's crazy because World Cup qualifying will probably start in I'd say 2019 towards the end. That World Cup's going to be in Qatar. There are rumblings that the 2022 World Cup. Might get moved from there because there's a lot of issues with FIFA and people getting money under the table yeah. and a lot of all the you know all these like shady shit going on and there's a chance where the World Cup might be in the states because no other country could literally if Russia wasn't able to prepare for the World Cup if they were to move the World Cup like two weeks before to the U S they'd be able to because there's I mean just the college football stadiums alone could field these games the Michi- you know the co- Michigan you'd be <laughs> Yeah just the, the US doesn't need to build any stadiums there's like every state has three football stadiums in it you know right. so they'd be able to so there are some rumblings that the Qatar World Cup might move but I'm looking at it f- from this view that there is an issue with the youth system as I mentioned before with the pay to play and you you need to do something to Christian Pulisic we don't deserve him it's crazy how this guy, from the moment he stepped on the field with the U.S. national team, he was the best player on the field, and he was 18 years old. So it's just saying, like, sure, he's the prodigy, he's the future, but it's also bad that, you know, Bradley and Altador have a decade on him, and he's already head and shoulders better than him. And it, it's just going to take these guys to play on big clubs in Europe, big minutes, and have an immediate and significant impact for there to be a change. Do you think... I was gonna. I was gonna say. Do you think it's possible that we we can just start over and we'll be good enough to qualify for the next World Cup? Yeah, because you, everybody starts with the same same slate. You know, everyone's gonna have zero points, and then you go from there. You're still in probably the easiest qualifying group, which is the biggest outrage. Like, if you were in Europe and you got paired in a group with Belgium, France, and like Croatia, and you didn't qualify. All right. Like those are sounds like a group of death. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's a group of death in the World Cup. Like that's fine, but you know, you've you, you've made it the US now they they set a standard where they're going to at least their expectations is to make it out of the group stages at the World Cup. Right. You know, uh, round the 16, you're happy. Anything after that is a bonus, but to not qualify is, is devastating. You you're talking about a generation you're you, you're not getting a generation of young kids in this country that are 10, 11, 12 years old that are growing up, they're going to tune in in the summer to watch the World Cup. They're going to be like, yo, to, to their older brother or, the, or to their dad, yo, where's the U.S.? Ah, they didn't make it. Yeah. What? Uh, I'm going to go watch the NBA. Or I'm going to go watch baseball. I'm going to go watch hockey or something. So you lose a generation. And also, we have a guy. Dude, he's being linked in, in a couple of years to Real Madrid, Barcelona. This is a guy that I saw Pulisic and Dortmund play against Real Madrid. And your boy, Christie is on there. Bale, Benzema. If you play FIFA, you know all these names. <laughs> like, these are world-class players. And he stood out. Like, my pops was telling me, yo, this kid's the real deal. Like, you know, Ronaldo's on the field now. Yeah. Benzema's on the field. Bale, like, you know, Royce, who's uh, a, an all-pro, all all-talent, all-world player that plays for the national team in Germany. He's on that team. And Pulisic stands out. But... And it sucks for him that we have a guy and we can't showcase him. We can't showcase to the world. We can't showcase to the general public. Guys like you who you pretty much know him because of me talking him up and telling you all the time or I'll show you highlights. But in the World Cup, you're into it just as much as I am. All our friends are. They tune in during the World Cup and you're losing a generation of fans like that. And it's a sport where... You know, I went on this I went on this rant on my Instagram where we're already made fun of for being soccer fans in the US. We're what, the f- fifth, sixth most popular sport? And, you know, it's not the size of your country, it's how popular the sport is in your country because a lot of people were saying, "How can Iceland make it where they're the size of uh, Corpus Christi?" But it's like, yeah, Iceland, their shit is soccer though. You know what I mean? Right. And even though we have 330 million plus people, our shit isn't soccer. So 
is is going to be need to be a lot of changes. They they should be able to qualify because of the, how the group is. But hey, I was saying this all along, you know that they should be able to qualify, and then they didn't. And also, let's just also say this: it's not like they were going to win the World Cup. Let's be honest. The right. way the team was, they'd probably get shellacked, not make it out the group. But you should at least be able to get there when the qualifying stages is that easy. Yeah, let me fucking watch the group stages. Give us least. three games where we could march down to the bar. I believe that we will win. You know, uh, born in the USA, a little Bruce. You're, you know, you're depressing me. We're bumping the I Am A Real American by the Hulkster. We can't even get that. So, And it sucks. It sucks. Pulisic is going to be uh, my, my biggest concern. And my, the one thing that upset me the most was that we can't showcase this kid to the people that just hear about him through their friends that do watch soccer. You know, Tim on VM who watches the World Cup doesn't watch any other soccer. Like, if I was to show him, like, yo, this is our guy, this is the future, and he sees him in the World Cup, he might be like, yo, yo, you're right, he's nice. You know, he's he's going up against these guys and he's doing his thing. Now, bedtime, you're not going to be able to see him. So, that's that. It's, it's going to be an upsetting summer. It sucks. Uh, the build up to those games are so awesome. But I remember being super excited for like when they were picking the group stages. Yeah, I was like watching it on TV, like fuck, like I don't want to be in this group, but like whatever. I was mad excited about that even, and now it's just there's just there's just nothing. Let's go Iceland. That's what I'm yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I, I'm I'm gonna jump on the uh, on the Messi bandwagon. Messi, by the way, if you guys didn't know, Argentina. I, last, can't, do, I can't do that to my boy. Last game. Oh, yeah. That's your man's. Yeah. You know, that's <laughs> that little. You know, CR7. That's, that, you know? that's that Peyton and uh, Brady thing going at it. But <laughs> exactly. Messi on the last day legit put the whole country on his back. Yeah, that's crazy. Dude, he's scored. It's been 11 months since someone else has scored for Argentina. Wait, what? It's been 11 months since someone else has scored a goal for Argentina in, in qualifying. He's scored every single goal. In the last 11 months, yeah. He's legit like, nah, this is my last chance where I'm going to be prime Messi to win a World Cup. I'm not going out like that. I'm not a sucker. I'm going out swinging, scored a hat trick in Ecuador. Hostile environment, higher altitude. Yeah, that's insane. You know what we call that? Congo. Congo. Big dick. Yeah. 12 inches minimum. (laughs) Uh, I'm all about Iceland just because of the clap. Oh, that's my shit. Got to see them win one. Look, it's still going to be fun. The World Cup is my favorite event. Obviously, my entire life, your entire life watching, we've always had the U.S. Yeah. So, like, it's cool. You'll watch England, Italy because of the storylines. But then you're like, Yo, I can't wait for this USA game. Like, yeah. It's just different, man. It's, it unites the country, and it, it's a bummer. I'm not that upset yet because it hasn't, it hasn't happened. Well, once it comes around, I'm, I'm going to really be fucking pissed off. Yeah, you're going to look at the schedule and be like, so this wasn't a joke. This is this yeah, legit like, happened. Uh, okay. Oh. Even when it ended afterwards, I was like texting you and I'm like, can, can we, can someone drop out or something? Yeah. So you're <laughs> someone like, gets sick. You're like, yo, seriously? Like this is really this, happening? This is it? Like we can't like, it doesn't depend. Oh man, it's fucking terrible. That Panama goal at the end too. Which the, the guy who scored for Panama actually plays with the Seattle Sounders too. In other countries, you get kicked out of the country for scoring <laughs> against your, you know, your, 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 national your, your, your national team. So just craziness. And the one goal that Panama scored, the ball never crossed the line too. Just, yeah, that was bad. Just, every, but you know what? That's what you get. And we'll end with this. That's what you get. Like in all sports, you know, sometimes it's week 17 in the NFL and it's all right. We got to win, but then him, him, and him, you know, them, lose. them, and them have to but lose. But if we tie, then they could lose. Yeah. They could win. No, yeah. you handle your business when you have to. You don't lose games in your – if you just win, if you just get points at home in the, in the hex, you qualify. Right. They lost to Costa Rica. They lost to Mexico. Like, it sucks. It sucks. I've been following this program since, since like 2002 – when Beasley and Donovan were, were 18 years old, and I've just been hooked. It's a different, like, they're on the same level for me, and if you guys watch the show and, and you know how I feel about the Giants, they're up there with the Giants, and sometimes, like, especially when the World Cup comes around, like, they're top priority, and I watch all the friendlies and stuff. Just v- very upsetting. It, it sucks. It's unfortunate. But you know what? It Wake-up call. You know, it happened in Germany in 2000 at the Euro Cup. They got one point in the group stages, and now... This is the standard that Germany has. This is the standard that Brazil has. They come back and there's heat on the national team. Like, 
national media is crushing them. Oh, coach, you got to go. Manager, you got to go. Players, you got to go. What did Germany do? They built a 10-year plan. And in 10 years, they won a World Cup. They went to a Euro Cup final. They went to a World Cup final. Look, we're nowhere near Germany. I'm not saying that, but it's nice to have a plan. So I'm mm -hmm. hoping that we just have a plan. Show me a plan, and then we'll worry about the rest. All right. Well, let's just wrap this up because it's too... It hurts too much to talk about now. Yeah, I've uh, like I said in the beginning, when you saw my face, that's that's how I've been all week. Anyway, uh, leave some comments of what you think. I know a lot of people who listen to VM are soccer fans, so hit up the comments. Let us know what you think about the U.S. not making the World Cup or what a solution is. Uh, and that is all. <laughs> we'll see you next time.